Yeah, so, so with this question, I, I think about it once again under the lens of risk and risk management, you know, so, you know, it's, it's sort of like a pre-incident, right? And then hopefully you, you have some, some sort of um, mitigation or something you put in place to, to, to address a potential in, incident and you have post-incident. So in my mind, what you were talking about is this is a sort of a post-incident situation where there, there's been a breach. What I am hoping is that we have put in place some pre-incident measures. So what does that look like, right? So, you know, we, I promise you this is not an Aon commercial, but it's gonna feel a little bit like that, so bear with me. But um, we have something we call zero dollar retainer at Aon, a cyber zero dollar retainer. So we have, we have, someone has a question in one of the chats around for forensic. I had read something when someone asked about forensic. We have sort of like, forensic, we have like data, and I, and I am not one of our cyber specialists, so I'm not gonna get the name right, but sort of one of our cyber, we have cyber experts from the people that you, when you have an incident, some of the worst incidents have been out there in the news, we've had people with Aon that have come, you know, come in and then right when that situation happened, you, you know, we, you call these people to your point, Bill and Julie, to stop the bleeding. So my question is, do you have that in place already? Have you put in place sort of the um, measures, the resources, you know, we, ha you know, the people that this is what they do? Your pre-incident plan, do you have one in place that you're now executing on? And so, so that, that involves calling, you know, these people that get right into your systems immediately to help you with the, stop the bleeding have you contacted your insurance carrier right because if it's a ransomware right and you and you and someone's asking you to pay millions upon millions of dollars who's going to pay that you need to let the insurance company know before you decide to just pay millions of dollars and then look for reimbursement from your carriers so um so i think in my mind it's something i said earlier rather than the board asking just like hey do you have a cyber policy really asking more in-depth questions around what is your pre-incident plan in the event of a breach? Um, you know, who are your key partners that you partner with to help you navigate that incident? Um, and, you know, do you have the appropriate coverages? Some people may not even have ransomware coverage because in the current market environment where ransomware or breaches are becoming such an issue, we're having certain carriers that are excluding it. So do you do you even have what you think you have when you said you had cyber insurance? And so I would say those would be the things I think the board and management need to be thinking about. So when that breach happened, and unfortunately, we are seeing breaches happen every single day. In 2021, in Oct almost October of 2021, if you don't have a pre-incident plan in place, as a management team or as a board aware of a pre-incident plan around cyber, there's a gap because there's just too many cyber incidents happening to not have those partners identified because the worst thing you want is trying to find somebody when you're in the middle of an incident to help you navigate it. That's the wrong, that's, that's, the, that's the wrong time to look for your partners and uh, to help you do that. 